I've seen so many videos on the benefits of Epsom salt, yet I've never seen a video telling you what not to do. Epsom salt is an amazing product with so many health benefits. There are specific ways on how to experience best results fast, but it's not used properly, it's almost useless. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kim. I've been one of the only holistic podiatrists in this country for well over 30 years. If you saw my last video, I talked about seven of my favorite health benefits of Epsom salt. But to get best results, you definitely want to make sure you're not making these five mistakes. Let's get right into it. So what are the five mistakes? So let's go into the first mistake, which is your temperature. I know inherently all of us like it hot because that feels so much better to begin with. I mean, unless it's too hot, but you should not have it too hot above 100 degrees. So it should be around 90 to about 100 degrees. Your body is 98.6 degrees, which is almost 100 degrees. So you want it to feel a little bit lukewarm, your like body temperature. That's where you want to start because if you have it too hot, what happens is that it increases your dryness and it also increases your swelling if you have it too hot of, of a water. It's a very a big mistake people are making because they just feel better. They want to make it much harder to begin with. It's a mistake that can cause a lot of problems. Second problem is dilution. A lot of people don't put the right amount of Epsom salt. They either put too much or too little. If you put too much, then it increases dryness and pain. But if you pick too little, then it doesn't really do much, right? So you want to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, you have to try it several times to make sure it's a it's the right amount. But uh, usually, if you if you have a basin, if you have your both feet soaked in it up to about ankle, you want about half cup of Epsom salt uh, per about that much of water. So that's a really easy way to do it. I'm going to give you a little more detail at the end of this uh, whole presentation, but that's a good place to start. And this way, you're not causing too much dryness, and if you have any cracks in there, then it doesn't cause any pain. Next one is time. I know a lot of us like to be in the water for a long time, but you don't want to be doing more than 20 to 30 minutes. I usually recommend even about 15 to 20 minutes of daily soaking or you know, a couple times a week soaking because you don't want to soak it too long. It also causes the same thing as the temperature. It causes more dryness. It causes more swelling if you uh, are soaking it for too long. Next one is frequency. I know you want to be soaking it every day or, or not. maybe once a week may not be enough, but you want to uh, make sure that you're, you check your feet to make sure you can handle all the soaking. In other words, if you have a lot of problems, you can soak it more often, like if you have an infection, if you have just injuries that you want to get the swelling out right away. So that's really effective. However, you want to just soak it to soak it every day, that, that would dry the area, and that's, uh, that may cause even more swelling in the area. So about one to two times a week is, is a regular routine. Unless you have conditions such as infection or you have injury, then you can soak it more often to decrease swelling and infection and other things. Next one, if you happen to be a diabetic person, then you happen to have insensitive skin and you can't tell if, if uh, water is too hot or too cold. So you want to make sure that you check the water before you, you get into the water. So you check the water and watch out for infection. You have to check your feet first to make sure that you don't have any cuts and infection because that can make it worse if you're soaking it too often. And also obviously we talked about checking the temperature of the water and the checking the dilution of the water. If you're diabetic, you'd rather be less diluted than more diluted because more dilution may cause more problem or irritate your skin or you have any cut, any kind of rash, it can make it worse. So you have to make sure that you have a pretty good skin before you get yourself into the water uh, if you're diabetic. And how do we do it? So we talked about what not to do. So let's talk about how do we prepare yourself to uh, have a really good foot soaks in Epsom salt. First one, you need to get some uh, stuff. You, you want to get a foot basin. You don't want it too deep, but you want to get your feet in there and at least to the ankle area. There are many products that are sold. They have a swirling electric going around and makes you feel more better, just like a sauna, you know? And those are really good. You want to look at some of those products and get one. Obviously, you want to get some Epsom salt. They're readily available in any pharmacy. And they have a lot of different Epsom salt with all, all kinds of scent and, and all those things. 
and then you can put some essential oil uh, you can put peppermint and there's a lot of other uh, oil that's really really good anti-inflammatory you can make it have more scent to it and a lot of Epsom salt these days I have combined with the uh, a lot of uh, essential oil and make it smell better make it more effective for specific uh, way to uh, heal the areas and then you before you get in now you got the basin now you're trying to get into the basin now you want to check the temperature you put the water in there we talked about not making it too hot it's very important to start with and then you put your uh, check your feet to make sure especially if you're diabetic or if you have injuries you want to check your feet to make sure that there's not no infection there's no uh, deep wound somewhere and there's no rash you want you want to make sure that you check those things for uh, you know good soaking is to prepare your feet to make sure there's nothing wrong with the feet I mean other than you've injured yourself or have infection and then you have uh, you now you're gonna uh, add the Epsom salt that uh, we talked about half cup rule about put about half cup into the uh, in, into the water but the, the more accurate way to do it is one tablespoon per one bottle of water that's a lot of work to measure but if you want to be more uh, exact make sure that you're putting the right amount that's more accurate way to put the Epsom salt and most importantly you check your time have a timer or something because you're in there feeling good for a while then you kind of lose track of time so you want to make sure that you do it less than 20 to 30 minutes at one sitting now you know the Epsom salt is such a great addition to any foot care routine but you definitely want to make sure you're paying attention to your body and not overusing or underusing. For more educational foot videos like this one, check out my next video. Until then, get educated, be empowered, encourage others today.